Hello students, I am Bhagyesh Deshmukh from Valchand Institute of Technology, Mechanical Engineering Department. This session is on design of bevel gear. We have derived the beam strength of a bevel gear. At the end of this session, we will be able to derive the wear strength of a bevel gear. Let us recall the terminology of bevel gears. In bevel gear, we have seen a pitch cone. Pitch cone is an imaginary cone, the surface of which contains all the pitch lines of the teeth in the bevel gear. It is represented by this cone. Then the back cone. The back cone is an imaginary cone and its all elements are perpendicular to the elements of pitch cone. You can see that this triangle, red color triangle represents a back cone. Pitch cone is represented by this triangle and back cone is represented by this particular triangle. Now let us see a formative spur gear in the bevel gear. There is a back cone radius RB. When we project this larger end of the tooth, we rotate it and then project, we get this particular spur gear. It is called as a formative spur gear in a bevel gear. The back cone distance RB, it is also called as back cone radius. It is the length of the back cone element. Back cone is from point C to this one, this pitch point A. A is representing pitch point at this particular tooth. If I take this radius and draw a pitch circle, it represents the radius RB representing a formative spur gear. This will be the pitch circle of the formative spur gear. It is also called as equivalent spur gear. This is the real dimension available, capital D, which is of the bevel gear. This is called as the pitch circle diameter D. But this pitch circle diameter D is of bevel gear. Now cone distance. The pinion of bevel is shown by this zone. The diameter of the pinion is given by dp. The gear is shown with the diameter dg. It is the common point apex of both the bevel gears. A0 is the cone distance. Gamma represents respective pitch angle. The formative number of teeth for a bevel gear are given by z dash equal to rb upon n. The actual number of teeth on the bevel gear, I need to take the actual dimensions. z is the actual number of teeth on bevel gear, d is the actual diameter of bevel gear and m is its module. I need to divide these two equations in order to establish the relation between z dash and z. Z dash upon Z is hence equal to 2 RB upon D. What we did over here is we have established a relation of formative number of teeth, actual number of teeth, radius of formative spur gear multiplied by 2 represents the diameter of the spur gear or the formative spur gear and capital D represents the diameter of actual bevel gear. Now let us do this construction. OC is the line then AB is joined and point A is joined to C. Now in this triangle BCA, sine of that angle is AB upon AC or we can write that sine of 90 minus gamma equals D by 2 upon RB or we can say that back cone radius equals D upon 2 cos gamma. Let us put this value of Rb 
in the equation of z dash upon z. The equation then simplifies and we can get z dash equals z upon cos gamma. It is the relation between virtual number of teeth or formative number of teeth and the actual number of teeth which is related by 1 upon cos gamma. When we derive a beam strength of a bevel gear, it is derived at the larger end of the tooth. We need to consider delta SB equals mx bx sigma b into y, where delta SB represents beam strength of the elemental section in Newton, mx is the module of the section in millimeter, bx is the face width of the elemental section and y is the Lewis form factor based on virtual number of teeth or formative number of teeth. The torque it is obtained as m b sigma b y into r into bracket 1 minus b by a naught plus b square upon 3 a naught square. What will assume that beam strength S b is the tangential force at the large end of the tooth and hence m t equals S b into r. From these two equation what we can obtain is S b equals m b sigma b y 1 minus b by a naught plus b square upon 3 a naught square. However, we know that b equals a naught by 3. Therefore, this last term in the equation of S b, it will be never having the value more than 1 by 27. Hence, we neglected it. Therefore, S b equals m b sigma b y into bracket 1 minus b by a naught. Here, we can define that the factor 1 minus b by a naught is a bevel factor. Taking all this methodology further, let us derive the wear strength equation of a bevel gear. The bevel gear, we need to consider it as equivalent formative spur gear in the plane which is perpendicular to the tooth at the large end. This is the assumption that we did. For a formative spur gear, S w equals b q d p dash k. All the terms have usual meaning. b is the face width of the gear in millimeter, q is the ratio factor, d p dash is the pitch circle diameter of the formative pinion in millimeter and k is the material constant in Newton per mm square. Pitch circle diameter of the formative pinion is given as d p dash equals 2 r b or we know that r b equals d upon 2 cos gamma. Using these equations, dp dash equals dp upon cos gamma, where dp is the pitch circle diameter of the pinion at the large end of the tooth. The wear strength hence is given by S w equals b q d p k upon cos gamma. Either the pinion or the gear in bevel is generally overhanging only three quarters of the face width is hence effective. Therefore, we need to introduce 0 0.75 in the equation and hence equation S w changes to 0 0.75 b q d p k upon cos gamma. The ratio factor q is given by 2 z g dash upon z g dash plus z p dash. k is given by 0 0.16 b h n upon 100 bracket square q can be also obtained by 2 z g upon z g plus z p tan gamma. This represents actual number of teeth on bevel. As we have seen that there is a lesser contact available in the face width, therefore mounting methods of bevel gears are established. First is overhang mounting of both shaft of pinion, shaft of gear, support is given at only one end of the shaft. There is no support beyond the gear zone here. There is a straddle mounting of either pinion or gear. One can be having two bearings as shown, one bearing on one end, another bearing as like overhang. But additional bearing is used which support this shaft and deflection can be avoided for that shaft. Definitely it is going to contribute to the cost. Therefore, designer has to design in such a way that overhang mounting method shall satisfy the design requirements.
but sometimes we need to restrict the bending of the shaft. Third method is both pinion and straddle for gear also, shaft of pinion, shaft of gear, first two bearing represents overhang mounting of both. Now, this represents, represents straddle mounting of pinion, another bearing is used on the shaft of the gear, so that gear shaft is also mounted as straddle. There is very least chance or no chance to bend the shaft. Thank you.